So should you upgrade to a full frame camera or change your system to a crop sensor camera, right? The size is not the issue. You know about the size, a full frame kit is bigger. What you're worried about is image quality. What do you lose or gain in image quality when you go from one system to the next? So this picture here has been taken with a high end full frame camera. And this picture here has been taken with a high-end crop sensor camera. Now, both of these pictures were taken at the same time, same place, very similar settings. So we can have a really good test and really get into these pictures and look at the differences. And here is a picture that's been taken with a high-end full-frame camera. And here is another picture of the same thing taken with a high-end crop sensor camera. Now the difference with those two pictures are they're both taken at ISO 10,000 in a low light situation. And they've been taken in the same place, you know, they've been put on the same tripod and exactly the same settings. And it's this performance under low light conditions or high ISO conditions that people really want to know when they are changing from one system to the other. You know, what exactly do you lose or do you gain? So let's go into Lightroom and really delve into these pictures. But just before we do, you may be watching this and you've changed systems. You may have changed from crop sensor to full frame or vice versa, and you would have either regretted it or it would have been the best decision that you made. So I really would love for you guys if you've got that experience, to put it in the comments of this video, share it with our audience. You know, we've got lots of learning photographers in our audience and your experience is gonna help them out. So please put your experience in the uh, comments of this video. Let's uh, go into Lightroom and have a look. Okay, so let me talk you through this. Uh, the green here on my film strip, the green is um, the full frame and the blue is the crop sensor cameras. So this particular picture here was taken with a Nikon D850, which is a 45 megapixel full frame camera. And then this picture here was taken with a Fuji X-T4. It's an APS-C camera, crop sensor camera, and this one is 26 0.1 megapixels, I think. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at processed versions first, then we're gonna go into the totally raw versions. Now, firstly, when I say processed versions, there's no heavy stuff going on here because I, I wanted to keep it kind of as real as possible. So if you look over in the basic panel over here in Lightroom, you can see, you know, it's, it's really basic. Just highlights and shadows there, a bit of dehaze, etc. And if I go over into the, the Nikon one here, the full frame, you know, very similar there. And just to put some context into these images, this picture here was taken by a photographer called Tom Archer, who's a fantastic landscape photographer. And he is the one that teaches our pro landscape course over at the School of Photography. And then this picture here was taken by your good self as, as I was filming the course. So, and the settings are very, very similar. They're not exact. The, the next picture that I'm gonna show you, they are exact, but obviously it's hard. I'm filming Tom uh, do his photography and I'm taking snaps at the same time. But, you know, if we look over here, this one is at F7.1. I've got it at my lowest ISO here. And then we look at Tom's version over here, and it's this, the aperture is the same, f7.1, and the ISO is ISO 64, which I think is the lowest on them Nikons as well. So the first thing is, you know, how do they look just like this? Well, if you're looking at them both like this, you know, they look good. <laughs> both of them look good. You're never ever gonna tell any difference in image quality like this on screen and I think that's the first thing to note all right but this video is not about that this video is about getting right into it and seeing the fine detail and what exactly you lose so let's zoom into 100% here on the uh, crop sensor camera the X-T4 and again the detail looks fabulous really 100% I don't think that you can argue with that let's go over to the Nikon camera here 
And again, we're already in 100% here and I'm gonna get it to roughly the same place. So sort of middle of the image, not much difference going on. You would expect that. These are pictures taken in daylight, low ISO, etc. But now let's zoom into 200% and see if we can see any difference. So I'm just gonna press 200% uh, at the top here. And we're gonna look for, for noise really. So let's scroll down to the sky. You will see noise mainly in blank parts if you haven't sharpened them properly. And incidentally, let's go down to the sharpening panel because you know I, just, I said I just did a basic sharp, a basic editing. So here in the detail panel, you can see that I've just taken the sharpening to 80. I've put a little bit of masking on it and that's it. That's all I've done in Lightroom and I've done exactly the same to the Fuji, all right? So, I mean, this is a very low ISO picture. You can see very slight bits of noise there, but nothing really. That's fine, absolutely fine at 200%. Now let's go into the Fuji one. And again, you can see I've got it at the, exactly the same, yeah? Exactly the same settings in the detail panel. I'm gonna come to the sky and you can't, you know, again, you can see a little bit again, but nothing, nothing really major. So there you go, all right? There's your noise test if you needed it. And there's the results of that, okay? But now I wanna look into the details of the image, you know, the really fine details of the image. So let's go to the trees and the bushes around here. Now in the Fuji camera, what you can see is like the, the leaves of the trees, if you like, they kind of, they start turning into lines. They start merging into just blocks of color. Now, of course, you're not gonna see that on you know, screens, on websites, on Instagram or whatever. But when you're zooming in on Lightroom like this, you can see it. So if it was a big print stretched, it might be something that would, um, would bother you. It kind of looks like a painting, if you like. It looks like an artist has done this with some uh, brush strokes. And yeah, and if we go over to the bushes as well, Again, it kind of looks like it's been painted. And that sounds weird, but it, it doesn't look like leaves on a bush. And that's obviously when we are zoomed into 200%. So let's go over to the Nikon one and see if the same thing is happening. Okay, so it's not happening in this picture, nowhere near as bad. I mean, there's much more detail in the trees, and especially if we come over to the bush here. I mean, there's much more, you can see it. You can clearly see that there is more texture, more tones, more detail in them bushes, which is the fine details of this image. So let's just recap so far. Viewing these pictures at 100%, in good lights, you know, good conditions, there's not much difference in them at all. When you start zooming into 200%, you can see that the fine details of this particular image, and that would be like the trees and the bushes etc you've got more detail in the full frame camera to the crop sensor camera but what you've got to figure out now is if it's enough to worry about okay now what about the dynamic range of the image again it's another thing that's common in people's worries if you like when they're moving from full frame to crop sensor. And for those people that don't know, so dynamic range is the range of tones that you will have in your image, tones and colors as a matter of fact. So how much can you push your shadows or push your highlights? It really is as simple as that. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go back into these pictures. We're gonna look at the raw file, the, the, just the basic raw file without no processing. And I'm gonna start pushing, pulling them about so we can see the exact difference. What I've got here is a virtual copy of this particular picture. So this is the processed Nikon full frame version and this one here is the raw file, okay? Now I have done very slight differences. I've just straightened the picture because it was on the wonk and I've changed the white balance to auto here and I've done that on the other picture as well and that's just so that we're looking at the colors the same, so that the colors don't distract us, okay? So there is the raw file of the Nikon, the full frame one, and if I come over to this one here, that is a virtual copy of the Fuji crop sensor camera, and incidentally, if 
it's colors you're worrying about when you change from one camera to another you really don't need to you know you do hear people say oh the colors are much better on a nikon or the colors are lovely on a fuji and things like this is is actually irrelevant because you can come into lightroom and you can change the colors into whatever you want them to be so it, it do not change from one camera to another because someone said oh the colors are better in that camera it literally doesn't matter because you can do all your color changing here what we're looking at right now is the dynamic range between the crop sensor system and the full frame system. Now let's just do a quick reality dynamic range test, okay? Which would be that we bring the highlights right down and we lift the shadows right up, okay? So there you go, that is the full frame version. Let's go into the crop sensor, the Fuji one. And again, let's bring the highlights down, let's bring the shadows up like that. And now let's zoom in Assume into 200%, yep, like that. And then let's see the difference. You've got some degrading there in the shadows. You can see that it's bringing out the noise a little bit. And now let's go and look at the Nikon full frame, see if it's done the same thing. And that's this picture here. And yeah, yeah, there is a little bit of degrading. I don't think it is as much, but it is certainly there. Let's go back to the Fuji one. And there you can see it in the shadows. Let's go back over to the Nikon one. And again, you can see some degrading in the shadows there. And there you go, okay. So there is a test there of a full frame and a crop sensor camera. So a quick summary of that is, you do get more detail in the full frame picture. Uh, you do get a bit more dynamic range in the full frame camera as well. What you've got to really ask yourself is, is it enough? Does it make that much of a difference? And that is just something that you are going to have to answer yourself. Now that was a picture in decent conditions, so we say. The next picture that we are going to look at is taken at an ISO of 10,000 and both pictures are exactly the same setting. So this is where it's really gonna show. But before we look at those, let me tell you about the courses that we run over at the schooloffotography.com. If you wanna learn photography properly, you wanna learn Lightroom properly, Photoshop, we've got landscape courses, macro courses, and loads and loads of other things, then come over and see us at the schooloffotography.com and join tens of thousands of people all across the world studying with us right now. And don't just take our word for it, go and look at our reviews on Trustpilot, Google, Facebook, and wherever you look at reviews, right? Go and see what other people are saying about us. And I promise you, we will teach you properly. So come over and see us over at theschooloffotography.com and join tens of thousands of other learning photographers just like you. Okay, let's go into Lightroom now and have a look at these low light pictures. So here they are here, and again, the ones in green are taken with a full frame and the ones in blue are taken with a crop sensor. So this picture here has been taken with a Canon 5D Mark IV 30 megapixel full frame camera. And then this one here has been taken with the Fuji X-T4 APS-C crop sensor camera, okay? They are both taken at exactly the same settings in exactly the same place at not exactly the same time because I had to change the camera on the tripod, but you get the point, all right? They're like about, I don't know, a couple of minutes um, after one another. And the settings were ISO 10,000. This was taken at a 35 millimeter focal length, which is a 50 mil equivalent on a full frame, F2, okay? And then if we go over to the full frame version here, the Canon one, there you go, the settings are exactly the same, the focal length's 50 mil, and the aperture is F2. And the only difference here, which annoyed me, was between taking the two shots, someone turned the light on in this building here, and there's literally nothing I can do about that. But apart from that, they are exactly the same, okay? So let's start um, with the Canon 5D, the full frame one. And again, I've processed these pictures very basically 
to look at to start with and then we're going to look at the real raw files but these ones have been processed slightly if you look over here in the basic panel we've got the highlights and shadows whites and blacks done and that's it the white balance has been changed to auto that's to keep them both to the same colors as possible and then if we come down here to the detail panel i've got exactly the same sharpening and noise reduction added to both uh, pictures okay so the amount is at 80 the masking here is at 50 and the luminance noise reduction is at 25. if you want to know what that means in detail come over and check our lightroom course out because we go through this in you know really in-depth detail over there so let's dive in and look at the noise because I know that's exactly what you want to look at first of all is the noise. So I'm going to zoom into 100% first of all and we're going to look at the noise in both pictures, all right? So here you go, here's the full frame version and for ISO 10,000, that's pretty good to be honest with you. Obviously you're going to see noise, that's not the question here, we're at ISO 10,000. What, we're, what the question is, is just about how much noise do we see and can we deal with it? And I think that this has done a pretty good job in dealing with the noise. We can see it around here and we can see it in the shadows around here as well. But viewing the picture at 100%, good job. We're gonna, we're gonna zoom in a bit more in a minute, but now let's go over to the Fuji one, the crop sensor one. And again, you can see the noise, but this time it is harsher. I suppose that's the that's the word to use you can see more of it okay let's just flick between the two again so full frame let's just move it across a bit so it's roughly in the same place there's the noise there at 100 percent back to the crop sensor and here it is at 100 percent so you can clearly see that there is a bit more noise in the crop sensor camera you should have been expecting that anyway right the question again is just how much more isn't it it's like can you live with it is it you know really bad or does it not matter and i will let you guys decide that tell me in the comments actually what you think but i'll let you decide and now let's zoom in to 200 percent and see what happens so let's click the 200 percent button here and now you can really see this is the crop sensor just to remind you you can really see the noise coming out all right it's got this what they call worming effect and it's quite common when you've got high ISO pictures and you've processed them in a program like Lightroom you do get this worming effects and now let's go and compare this with the uh, full frame the Canon one let's go over to here you can see a little bit of that worming effect here in the full frame version but it's nowhere near as much but you can see it, okay? And I think that you need to understand that. <laughs> if you've got noise in your picture, you've got noise in the picture. And clearly shooting at ISO 10,000, that is going to happen. I'm gonna flick between the two again. Let's go into that one again. So there's the crop sensor at 200%. And now let's go over to the full frame again, the Canon. And here is the Canon at 200%. And this is looking specifically at the noise between full frame and a crop sensor camera taken at a high ISO like 10,000. Now let's look at the raw files where there's been no processing and let's test a dynamic range. Okay so again over in Lightroom I've got this one here which is a virtual copy of the process version. I've reset it so it just went back to a normal raw file I've put chromatic aberration on both pictures because I don't want to detract from any chromatic aberration. Again, that's not really part of this test, so let's just get rid of that. I've turned off the detail panel. Now, by default, when you bring a picture into Lightroom, it will sharpen it slightly, okay? But I've turned that off so that we can really look at the noise in both of these pictures when they're totally raw files and then up the top here i've just changed the white balance to auto again and that is to keep the colors between both pictures as similar as possible so they don't detract from what we're trying to look at before we look at the dynamic range actually let's look at the noise between the raw files so i'm going to zoom in to 200 percent so this is the raw 
file of the full frame version on the Canon with no sharpening, no noise reduction, nothing. This is what you get. You can really see that there's a lot of noise in the picture. Now let's go over to the Fuji picture, the crop sensor one. And there you can see that there's a lot of noise as well because all of the noise reduction, the sharpening, everything's been turned off. Let's flick between the two again. So you can see that there is more noise in the crop sensor camera, which you would expect, but like I've said a million times now, I think it's whether it's how much, you know, and whether you can deal with it. And actually the one that you need to really worry about is the process version because you get this noise um, from pictures when you're shooting at ISO 10,000. It doesn't matter what camera that you use, but Lightroom cleverly reduces that noise for you. So actually, the last test that we looked at where I'd process both pictures, that's the one to, to really look at, to be fair. And now let's push and pull these highlights and shadows. You know, let's test this dynamic range and let's do the realistic type test, which is where you drag the highlights right down and you lift the shadows right up. And it's starting to degrade about around here. So you wouldn't lift it that far but about there let's go over to the fuji one let's do the same thing again bring the highlights down and lift the shadows up and again yeah it's about there let's flick between the two so for me that little test has just shown that pulling and pushing the highlights and the shadows there are very similar between the two pictures of course when we zoom in you're going to see more noise in one than the other because we've just tested and shown that so let's just click in and, and show you that again. So this picture now has had highlights and shadows adjusted. The dynamic range has been stretched, shall we say. There's no noise reduction on it. And you've got um, this, this amount of noise. Let's go into the full frame. And again, on this picture, the dynamic range has been challenged. There's no noise reduction and we've got this noise. So a little bit better than the crop sensor, I would say, okay? Now, if you wanna view these pictures in more detail, this video is 4K, the screen's 4K, so if you're watching on a 4K screen, then you, know, you should be seeing exactly what I'm seeing here. But you can also click on a link in the description of this video, and it will take you to a page where I have you know, zoomed in, cropped in, and I'm gonna put them side by side so that you can really see the difference. Link in the description, click on it and go and check that out. And now it's time for my opinion, I think. Now, remember this is an opinion and I want you to put your opinions in the comments of this video. And I can tell you now that a full frame camera will give you more detail, more dynamic range. But what you've got to consider is how much more do you actually get? Now that's what this test is. And I'm gonna to be totally honest with you, this is the first time I've done this test and I, and I actually didn't, didn't know um, what we've just shown you. There's not as much difference as I would have first imagined. I've gotta to be totally honest here. Now these are high-end cameras, don't forget. The, the detail in the landscape shot, you know, with the trees looking like a painting, etc. I didn't like that, I've got to be honest. That's with the crop sensor. And you can tell with the Nikon full frame camera, it, it had that detail in it. As far as the dynamic range, the pushing and pulling of shadows, etc., not much difference at all. I wouldn't even worry about that when you're in good conditions, you know, out doing landscapes. So for me, when it comes to the good lighting situation, shall we say, it was just them fine details when you're doing landscapes. It was better on the Nikon, but I think I could live with that, to be honest with you. What I have to consider is carrying a load of gear around, right? So when we was on that shoot filming, two bodies, four lenses, sound equipment, monitor, etc., we're getting nearly all of that, nearly the whole lot of what I've just told you, in one camera bag. You can never in a million years do that with a Canon full frame system or a Nikon full frame system, you couldn't do it. Um, so what you lose and gain is what you've actually got to balance up there. And for me, 
if I was gonna be out on my own, shall we say, shooting, and I only needed to take one lens or whatever, you'd probably take the full frame. It's, 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 it's okay, you put that in a rucksack. If you're starting to use several lenses, filters, this, that, and the other, that is when you really need to think about the size of your kit and what you lose and what you gain between them two different systems. When it comes to low light, like I just showed you there, that was really surprising. I've got to be honest, that was really surprising. I was expecting the full frame Canon to really outperform the Fuji one. It, it does outperform it, particularly in noise, but only when you're viewing it at 200%. In 100%, yeah, you do see it, I know, but like when you really zoom in, you see it. I was expecting, I was expecting the Canon to perform a lot more. I've got to be totally honest there. So that is my opinion, and I'm, I'm in a fortunate position that I could sit here and say, okay, I'm gonna go out with my Canon gear today, or I'm gonna go out with my Fuji gear today, and I make the decision there and then. But obviously, most people have got to weigh up their odds. Crop sensor system, full frame system, right? You know about the size. That's not what this video was about. It was about what you lost in image quality. You've just seen that. Now you have to make the decision. Now, if this video has helped you, please help us. Subscribe to our channel. Obviously, if you wanna see more of this stuff, you've gotta press that like button, share it with your friends, and tell us what you think in the comments. We love to hear from you. So just tell us what you think, and if you've had experience, you've moved from one system to another, we wanna know how it went. Apart from that, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next one. And remember, if you wanna learn photography properly, come over and see us at theschoolofphotography.com.